for a little bit of context, this video started at the end of the summer and it ended uh, in February of 2021, okay? It'll make more sense when you guys watch the video. This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. We've got a produce walk-in that is running high. The key to therm controller is given a high temp alarm, 49 degrees. Sounds like it's low on charge. That and or the compressor is going off on internal bypass. Could be that too. Uh, we're having a heat wave right now, so it's over 100 right now. So let's get up on the roof and see what's going on. That's interesting. I just walked through a big old spider web. Huh, cool. Well, I've done some work on this roof before. This equipment's over here. Running. Running. Huh, interesting. I gotta remember which one's which. I'm gonna have to jump into these. This is their walk-in freezer. This, I believe, is the produce walk-in. I think, if I remember right. So I'm gonna have to jump into it. Yeah, and it's uh, ridiculously hot outside right now. For being like four o'clock in the afternoon, it's 111. It's nuts. All right, well, um, this is my unit. It was sounding like it was low on charge, but it's running and the sight glass is empty and or clear. I imagine it's probably empty. I got my gauges hooked up. Side glass is flashing now. I don't like those side glasses, by the way. Um, but we're definitely low. Our saturation temperature is only 115 degrees. For 404A on this older system right here, typically it's gonna run about 25 to 30 degrees over ambient. Uh, we're definitely below that when it's 110 outside. So um, this drum doesn't have very much refrigerant left in it. I knew that, but I'm gonna just go ahead and use that up and then uh, we'll go get some more out of the van. Again, to point out the rules of thumb, 25 degrees, 30 degrees over ambient, you cannot go by those numbers, okay? They're just kind of like in the back of your head to help you moving. Um, this guy, I've been adding refrigerant and it's, it's about ready to clear. It's flashing, then clearing, then flashing, then clearing. I'm actually gonna stop right there. I'm gonna let the box come down in temperature a little bit and satisfy, okay? And then we are going to, if we need to, clear the sight glass. But it's also possible because it's like 60, 50 degrees in that box. Well, maybe it was like in the high 40s. But anyways, it's also possible to overcharge the system if the expansion valve's going crazy right now. So um, we want to just kind of let it stabilize out a little bit and we'll get closer to clearing it. But, you know, just because I said 25 to 30 degrees over ambient, that doesn't mean that's what you always charge to, okay? I assume this was an older unit that had, you know, lower sear rating, or not sear, but lower efficiency, um, and it's not the case. This thing's looking like we're gonna be about 20 degrees over ambient, so. Dang condenser fan motor and blade or something's out of balance, and every once in a while the unit just starts vibrating like crazy. All right, we're gonna go downstairs and see if we can find a refrigerant leak. We're looking for obvious signs. I'm not doing anything crazy because we're already on overtime. It's like 4.40 in the afternoon or evening, early evening, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just gonna get them operational. Uh, it's Friday night, we'll get them through the weekend and then come back out and do major, as long as it's not pissing out gas, we're gonna go look. What do you know, it's all quiet now. You don't hear that hissing sound anymore. It's coming down in temp. We're gonna open up this guy and look in here for a refrigerant leak. I don't see any major signs of oil. It doesn't sound like it's pissing out. Again, I'm not gonna waste too much time on this because I don't really wanna be here any longer than I have to be right now. So, I'm just looking back here. No oil, fitting's not loose. This has already been, I don't know, there's a fitting there too, but don't feel any oil. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if the coil's leaking. All right, well that's all they're getting for today. It's operational, I'll tell them to keep an eye on it. We'll come back and do a leak check when we're not on overtime. All right. Customer opted to go ahead and have the equipment replaced on this one. This is a uh, older 404A system, but this is one of those customers that's very proactive about changing their equipment. They also purchased their own equipment, so. We've got a new one horsepower, intelligent, system going in so 
Uh, the process right now is I'm gonna get this guy pumped down. We'll do the uh, recovery down on the ground. We got a crane coming and you know, the whole shebang. So usually, this is my first use of the Testo 550S. Kind of small. But um, just pumped it down. This is one of those funky coal pack units. If you guys ever worked on them, there's no king valve. You gotta use the service valve, it's kind of silly. So you can't change the dryer unless you recover the charge. Um, pumped it down, we'll go ahead and get everything disconnected. I'll just shove my manifold in there and uh, we'll recover it on the ground. Although this one, because the ports are on the other side, I technically don't have to put my manifold in there. So maybe I'll just let my guy downstairs figure it out when he recovers. All right, we got everything prepped. Line sets cut, electricals disconnected. Um, we're currently taking the coil down. Uh, I don't know that the crane, we got a really small crane, so I don't know if it's gonna reach, but this unit's light enough. It's just a one horse unit, so we'll set it over there, lift it over here. I'm just waiting for my guy to come up here and help me lift this over there. Here's our new unit. We already got the covers pulled off. We're gonna end up redoing a section of line set. We're gonna reuse a small section so that way I don't have to re-penetrate the roof. But we're moving along. The line set's a little bit of a chore because the camera's gonna be a pain in the butt for focusing. Come on. There you go. Um, it's it's a far drop. That's a really far drop. But the line set comes over, goes up there. It, it's doable. Once you get up here, it's decent. But we had to bring a four foot ladder to be able to get down. So my line sets right here, we're still kind of working some things out. We still got to strap it and things too. So, um, but yeah, we're getting there. So we just left this small section right here, just where it comes down. We reused that just so that way we didn't have to fight with their giant ceiling and everything. So it's working out good so far. So we got the new coil installed. It's an Intelligen. We already spray foamed the holes. Line sets installed. P-trap going up. There's that cooler tape that I use. So this one has a smart or a EEV so it doesn't have a traditional sensing bulb so we can make this trap go right to the coil. Electrical's coming out. We're just doing the uh, evacuation right now and then we'll start it up. Uh, doing a one hose pull as far as the evacuation goes. 2600 microns, so we're getting there. It's gonna take some time. We're all cleaned up here, but uh, yeah, electrical's done. Just waiting. Line set, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it's not the work of art, but it'll work. All right, it's time to charge this guy. So we've, uh, Purged everything before I hooked it up. We're still in a vacuum. You can see the micro gauge is slowly climbing because I put a little um, refrigerant into the low side. So um, I front seated the receiver. Uh, that way, all the refrigerant is going to dump into the receiver and go nowhere else. Uh, the system charge, the maximum charge for this system is nine pounds. So we're going to go ahead and start with that nine pound charge and see where that gets us. It should be good. And uh, yeah, so we're already purged and zeroed out. I zeroed out the scale, so we're just gonna open up the high side. And uh, dump it in right here. And we're just watching until it gets to nine pounds. All right, we are running now. Um, I'm just uh, charging the system. That glare is no joke. Um, we're at about seven pounds right now, so. Nine pounds is the max charge. That's what I like to do is put the max charge in here. Um, and this already has a short line set. So usually the max charge accounts for about 50 foot line set. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more once you go past 50 foot. But this one, I would say the line set's only 25 feet, 30 feet, somewhere in there. So we're almost there. All right, uh, we gotta strap that line right there. Um, this thing is like super tight. They fit a lot of crap in that little box. But it's all installed. It's charged up. We're gonna go downstairs, check on the EVAP. It's gonna be a while before it's down to temp. But um, everything's good. All right, so we are up and running. Um, the thing's almost down to temperature already. It's a small little box, so it's 41 degrees in here right now. Foil's all in. You know, we'll, the foam will seep out and dry here in the next couple hours. But yep, everything's good. We're gonna call this one done. You know, with these customers, sometimes it takes forever to get the equipment. So this one started at the end of the summer, um, uh, gave the information to the customer. Uh, it took them forever. They approved everything. But since the approval, I had to send another technician back out there to put refrigerant in it again 
and then we finally got the equipment here. Uh, we just installed it on February 24th was when we did the install. So um, nothing too crazy with the install. You know, as far as the line set goes, you know, I love replacing the entire line set, but this one, there were a few factors that made it a little bit difficult. First off, uh, the customer had 12 foot ceilings, okay? So their drop ceiling was 12 feet in the air. So we actually had to bring an extension ladder in the building to be able to get up on top of the walk-in. Um, that made it a little bit awkward, but then where the line set came down was actually over some cooking equipment in the kitchen. And it was just going to be awkward to run an entire new line set. Plus on top of that, the, uh, the original contractor that installed that equipment, they did not put like a, a roof penet like a normal roof penetration. It was literally just the roof material. You guys probably saw it a little bit in there. I mean, it was just going right through the roof material. Now, I had originally thought about taking the entire condensing unit and moving it like more over the walk-in, but that whole area, I don't know if you guys saw any of it in the video, that whole area was a low spot for the roof because that was the main roof drains. So I really didn't want to have to start leveling out the condensing unit. I could have done it had I been more prepared, but honestly, we quoted this job without even really spending too much time because I didn't expect them to replace the equipment. Originally, I thought we were just going to go in there, change a receiver, um, repair a refrigerant leak and be done. Uh, but they jumped on top of it and went ahead and had us order everything or had, you know, they went ahead and ordered everything. So I get this a lot too. You know, why do I let my customers order their own equipment? When you deal with certain chain restaurants, it, that's just how it is. That's just part of the game when you're doing restaurant refrigeration is, is oftentimes certain chains will order their own equipment and, you know, you can do their work or you cannot do it. I mean, bottom line, they're going to find someone that's going to do it. So, you know, we still do okay with it. Um, but yeah, anyways, as far as the installation goes, you know, nothing else crazy besides having to reuse that small section of line set. I'd say altogether, maybe three feet of it. And I did look at it. I pulled the insulation off. There was nothing wrong with it. So it was fine. Um, yeah, everything else went really smooth. Um, intelligence startup, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the Intelligen for a few reasons. One of the things that bums me out about the Heatcraft Intelligen units is that they use the EEV as the solenoid valve. And if the coil loses power via someone shutting off a switch for the evaporator coil or something, the EEV does not shut and it continues to run and floods back to the compressor. Also with the Intelligen or QRC or Beacon, any of those, they do not want you powering the evaporator coil with anything else uh, on that circuit already. So for instance, this particular restaurant, um, the lighting for, for whatever reason, the lighting for the walk-in freezer, which is the unit next to it, is ran off of the same breaker as this evaporator coil. Where, you know, yeah, that's not technically correct, but it's worked fine for 15 years, you know, or whatever. But now that we installed this uh, intelligent unit, I have to tell the customer they're going to have to get an electrician and he's going to have to separate those circuits. Uh, something about some sort of feedback issues that Heatcraft says happens. So I don't know, you know, but it is what it is. Um, it's not really going to be my responsibility to separate that electrical circuit. That'll be an electrician's thing, but he'll have fun getting on top of that box, though, because that's kind of a chore. But Hey, I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. Um, keep in mind, I've got the new tool review channel. There'll be a link in the show notes of this video. It's called HVACR Tools. Um, myself and the overtime crew, we're going to be doing tool reviews on there. So definitely go subscribe and be ready. We've got a uh, the first series of videos that we're going to be releasing is going to be on the, all the new Testo products, the Testo 550S manifold and 550i manifold and their new vacuum gauge and a couple other other new products. So... Um, that'll be kind of the, the kickoff video. And then we're going to start doing tool reviews on all sorts of stuff. So please uh, subscribe to this channel, HVACR videos, if you haven't already and subscribe to the new tools channel. Okay. Really, really appreciate you guys. And we will catch you on the next one.